Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn here with a custom GMMK Pro 3 HE from Glorious to talk to you about Hall Effect Switches. This keyboard sports Hall Effect Switches and it's one of several keyboards in the market which is able to do so. I want to talk to you about what Hall Effect means and what difference it can make to your gaming experience. Hall Effect is a popular keyboard switch amongst gamers for several reasons. One, it's fast to respond. Two, it's comfortable to type on and gives a good experience. And three, allows for both adjustable actuation points, as you can see here from 0.1 millimeter to four millimeter, and rapid trigger, which we'll get to in a second. Hall effect switches are quite a bit different from your traditional mechanical switches. They're more intelligent and they have a better technology in them that allows for the tracking of the actuation point, which means when the key press activates. If you pull them out of a keyboard, as you can do with the Glorious GMNK3, because it's hot swappable, you'll find that these switches are interestingly designed because a magnet essentially runs through the middle. You can see that in action here when you press that down. Now this is pretty clever because it allows the board to track how far the switch has been pressed based on that magnet and its closeness to the PCB. These are quite a bit different from your traditional switches, which you can see here an example of those. These are box switches, but they're basically the same sort of logic for most MX style switches. Cherry being the traditional brand behind those, but there's a lot of other ones like Gatron, for example. You'll notice on the underside of these switches, they have several pins on them. So you've got a couple of copper pins here, which make contact with the board and either soldered into it or pushed into hot swappable boards, depending on what keyboard you're using. You can have three or five pin switches and interesting different designs there. If you pull a traditional MX switch apart, you'll find it has multiple bits inside. You've got a spring, a leaf contact, and then the operating part on top. What you'll find with these traditional switches is when you push the top of it down, it goes into that spring and then pushes down into the leaf. You can get various different versions of switches, obviously with Razer's Clicky, for example, have linear and tactile switches, so you can get a different feel and a different sound from these different designs. These are all mechanical switches over the same sort of logic, that classic spring action and the copper leaf inside, which registers the click. This makes these switches pretty dumb traditionally because essentially you have to make contact with that in order to close the, the circuit and send the signal to the keyboard, which means you're set at a specific level of actuation, usually around 1.5 millimeters for gaming purposes, which means you have to push the key in a certain distance before the signal sent to your PC for gaming. You can see a glorious Holy Panda switch here, which is your mechanical switch on the left, and then obviously the Hall Effect switch on the right. Quite a bit different in the design, not just on the outer, but on the inside as well. The Hall Effect switches are a lot more customizable at software level, and that's because of this internal design, which as you can see is quite a bit different. So it's quite interesting. And here's a view of the inside, thanks to Gloria, showing how it looks and the possibilities of it, opening up things like rapid trigger, adjustable actuation, four in one dynamic keystrokes. Now, just like mechanical switches, you can get Hall Effect switches in various different formats. So you can still get the clicky, the linear, and the tactile response. So you can get different feel, different actuation pressure as well. So the, the amount of pressure you have to put on it and then you get a different sound and a different feel and different typing experience from it. So that's all a personal choice, but the big difference in the way they operate. The interesting thing about this design is you'll see if you look at the board here that it can accept the pins of an MX switch as well as a Hall Effect switch. Now, not all boards are gonna be capable of doing this. Obviously, you need to make sure the Hall Effect switches are compatible with the keyboard you're trying to use. This, however, makes the installation of Hall Effect switches a much easier process. You can see that they just pop in really easily and then you can customize your board. So you can obviously swap out the switches on this one, for example. Now, with traditional switches, I've always found this a bit of a pain. If you've ever tried to swap all the switches on your keyboard, as you can see me doing here with the Corsair K65 Plus Wireless, you will have found it takes some time and it's a faff. And it is so easy to make a mistake during this process and to bend those copper pins. 
And I've found this happens basically every time I try and do this. You end up bending a few pins and finding a key has not been working. So for a few weeks, my dash key or the minus key here just hasn't worked. And I haven't got around to replacing it because I couldn't be bothered to take the time to do it. But if I pull the switch out now, I can demonstrate what that looks like. You can see that one of the pins in it is just bent. This actually happened with about four or five of these pins when installing these standard MX switches into the keyboard. And it's not against Corsair, this will happen with most hot swappable keyboards unless you're really careful. It's really easy to accidentally bend these pins during the installation process and a real faff. And then you'll just find that the key doesn't work and you don't know that until you turn the keyboard back on and plug it in. You don't have that problem with Hall Effect switches because there's no pins, so you can't bend them. You just plug them in and away you go and you have a much nicer installation experience. So it's a lot better that way. The other thing is these key switches are just highly reactive and really responsive. They send the signal really easily that you can feel the difference when you start to play with it. But more importantly, it's highly customizable. So I can show you here what that looks like. On the right hand side here is the glorious core software where you can see the actuation level as it's happening. And on the left side is the live view of me pressing the switch. You'll see that you can push it in and get an idea of what that level is. And then you can adjust to where you want it to be a personal point. So whether you like a light press, for example, if you set it really low, like 0.1 millimeters or something, then it will basically respond with a gentle touch, which can be a problem for typing because you might find you're accidentally activating the key when you don't mean to. But for gaming, it means it's highly responsive. It feels that press as soon as you touch it. So immediately the things will happen that you're trying to do in game. And then you can turn on rapid trigger, which is another level of customization. Now with a switch, usually if you push the key in, once it reaches the actuation point, the signal gets sent to the PC and then you have to lift your finger all the way off and then push it back down again to activate it again. With rapid trigger turned on, what happens is if you lift your finger even slightly, so not all the way, but um, a very small amount, as soon as you push it back down again, it will register that click again. So the presses get activated even faster in game. It means no matter what the actuation level you've set, essentially, you can push it all the way down and then lift your finger up slightly and then back down again, and it will quickly get that response and monitor how you've done that. Now you can do the actuation point adjustment across the entire keyboard, or you can set specific keys. It might be that you want WASD, for example, to have a really low actuation point and the rest of the keys to have a sort of more standard usable one for typing purposes. Obviously you could also set up separate profiles for gaming and for typing. You will find with the certain settings that the keys just activate when you don't mean to. I find that when I'm just sitting there with my hand on the keyboard, for example, just resting it there while I'm browsing the web, I'm accidentally activating the keys, which is one downside. You can see all the benefits of Hall Effect switches though, and they are pretty different and very useful for gaming purposes. Hopefully this has been helpful. Check out the links in the description to find out more. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.